Hello, my name's Andy. Welcome to episode 81 of Keeping Water. In this week's episode, I finally got round to finishing part two of Pond vs Predators. Now, way back in episode 71, I made part one and it was all about herons. In this week's episode, I'm going to be talking about more than one predator, one of which I think is probably the riskiest predator that your fish might face in the UK, at least. Now, the reason I'm making this episode this week is, once again, no new fish. And also, I didn't get round to making the fence around the pond, um, mostly because I really haven't, can't afford it this month. So hopefully, at the beginning of next month, I'll upgrade the heron fencing around the pond, which I think will look a lot nicer. Once again, over the last week, I've had a nice increase in subscribers. If you're not subscribed, please do. I would really appreciate it. It really helps keep me motivated and it helps me get closer to that 500 subscriber mark. If you like the video, please like. If you don't like the video, then feel free to dislike and let me know why. There's not going to be an outro on this video. So this is the last you'll see of me talking, although I will be doing a lot of talking in a disembodied way in a moment. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next Monday when I will talk hopefully about fish. Although I think wishing it too much is probably jinxing it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed part two of Pond vs Predator and um, I hope you share your thoughts about keeping fish safe from predators and predators themselves and what I've included in the video. That would be great. Thanks very much and I hope you enjoy it. In part one of Pond vs Predators, I looked at probably the most commonly worried about predator that visits ponds in the UK, the heron. In part two, I'm going to look at three other UK based predators, one of which is probably the most challenging to protect your fish from, although thankfully not as common as the others. As I said in part one, these predators are just doing what their instincts and drive to feed dictates. And although they may be putting our pets at risk, they have just as much right to live their lives as our fish do. Anyway, the first of this episode three predators is the fox. Foxes are small to medium sized omnivorous mammals. There are 12 species of what is called true foxes, which live on every continent apart from Antarctica. The most widespread of the 12 species is the red fox, which is also the largest of the true foxes and one of the most widely distributed carnivores on the planet. On average, adults measure 14 to 20 inches high at the shoulder, 18 to 35 inches in body length, with large bushy tails measuring 11 to 22 inches. The largest red fox on record in the UK weighed 38 pounds and was 55 inches long. Foxes hold territories, the size of which depends on habitat and availability of food. They can be as small as 0.2 square kilometres in urban areas or up to 40 square kilometres in hill country. Part of the success of foxes as their natural territory has declined is their flexibility around diet. They eat both hunted and scavenged animals, as well as both meat and plant-based items. Research indicates 95% of an average rural fox's diet consists of meat, both hunted and scavenged, mainly rabbits, rats, birds and small mammals. Insects and worms may constitute another 4% and the remaining 1% may consist of fruit. However, in an urban area, natural prey and scavenged meat they cover only 55% of their diet. Insects and worms add 20%, fruit 7%, with household leftovers making up the remaining 18%. Foxes need about half a kilogram of meat every day, and if they don't find it, they compensate that with fruits like strawberries and wild fruits. Fish are known to make up a small proportion of their diet. How much is obviously determined by environment and availability. That foxes are successful at hunting fish can be proven with just a quick image search, however. 
So, foxes are masters of adapting to their environment and taking advantage of available food sources. But how does this relate to us as pond keepers? Foxes are known to explore garden ponds, behaviour for which there's a number of explanations. They're drawn to gardens in general, probably as there's always the possibility of food, whether in rubbish or items put out for pets or indeed wild animals. Additionally, there's opportunity for somewhere to hide and escape in clement weather. And finally, there's the pond themselves. A fox's initial fascination for ponds will be the water, as it will provide a safe and convenient place to drink. Then, their attention may either be drawn to the fish themselves or the promise of other potential prey like frogs. Foxes are maybe not as skilled as the next predators in this video, but they are still more than able to catch any unsuspecting or overconfident fish. Additionally, foxes are wild animals, often in dire need of food, so are unlikely to turn down a ready and available food source. Ways of preventing foxes from getting your fish are similar to herons and indeed most predators, although some aspects may be surprising in their case. Foxes are more than able to get into gardens. They can climb most fences and walls and also dig under gates, etc. if needed. They are cautious around cats and dogs and will avoid fights if they can, but equally will take risks when hunger drives them to. And, as they mostly hunt at night, they will have less concerns about entering another animal's territory when they're probably wrapped up cosily in their owner's house. I live in an area where there are numerous foxes. Possibly, from the sound of their calls and fighting, where multiple territories overlap, and although foxes pass right by my garden, I've little evidence that they actually enter it. Maybe due to my cats, one of which at least is quite territorial and mardy with other animals, and possibly also due to the proximity of other sources of water close by, negating the need for them to take risks to quench their thirst. If they did enter my garden, I think the net fence that has so far worked well in preventing herons getting my fish would pose few challenges to a determined fox. Where my pond would work against them is the depths right by the edge, meaning there's no shallow water for the fox to wade through to get close to their prey, and some good depth for the fish to descend into to get away from them. As I said in part one, I don't have any aversive deterrents like water sprays or electric fencing. My guess would be that any initial fear a fox would exhibit would be overcome relatively quickly if the need for food was great enough. So although they may be put off at an initial try, a hungry and desperate fox would return and beat those kind of systems. Soft netting would again put off casual attempts, but foxes are pretty clever and obviously have strong teeth, so given time and perseverance, a fox could overcome that too. Some advocate putting out food for foxes, as free offerings provide much lower risk, less effort alternatives, which would reduce their need to hunt your fish. The problem with this is keeping up with demand. Unless you were consistent with the offerings, you'd be attracting a predator to your garden, but maybe not feeding it enough to prevent it from needing to top up with your tasty fish. Secondly, other predators will be attracted, which may not get their share and will then in turn switch to the nearest available option, your pets. Therefore, my preventative measures against foxes may seem a little fragile. However, my fish are at quite low risk from them. This is due to a number of factors that they are a little reluctant to enter another animal's territory unless the need is great. The availability of a water source, my local stream close by, which provides both a drinking source, but also prey options. Fencing, which while easily climbable to a fox, has no obvious gaps for a more easy entrance, and an abundance of other food sources locally. Although, as I said, the heron fence would probably prove to be not much of a challenge, the pond itself would make accessing the fish difficult for a fox, especially given my fish's natural wariness and timidity. The next predator on the list are not wild animals at all, and are not only numerous in both my local area, and indeed most people's, but also actually live in my own house, and that is the domestic cat. Around the world, cats have been domesticated for thousands of years. Although revered in some cultures, they were primarily kept as pest control, or at the very least, left to find their own food. 
Cats have therefore retained their hunting skills, with only superficial changes to their appearance taking place, either by being deliberately selected or developed by chance, for instance fur length or colour and patterns. This has meant that cats have also, in addition to their skills, retained their physical attributes and comparative strength, in contrast to, for instance, some breeds of dogs. They've also retained their instinct to hunt, regardless of how well fed they are by their owners. Research has shown that the impulse to hunt is somewhat separate from feelings of hunger, although well-fed cats may hunt less than cats who are left to their own devices. This explains why cats will often hunt and kill, but not necessarily eat their prey. It's interesting, therefore, that some cats actively hunt pond fish, while others seem mildly interested but don't pursue them. My cats are keen hunters, the largest one in particular, and in addition to the birds and rodents they catch, they've been really interested in the pond's inhabitants. Initially, I just placed a small fence at the front of the pond, which was their easiest access to the fish. Then, with herons visiting, I increased the fence all around the pond, which, while not impenetrable to a determined cat, has been enough to put them off. They still show interest when the fish splash or are actively up at the surface, but they don't concertedly hunt them. Their hunting instinct is still triggered by frogs, however, and they spend hours by the pond looking for them, even if they're far from keen on eating them when they actually catch them. So, the heron fence is also a reasonable cat fence. Fences aren't universally liked, however, so other people have used alternative deterrents, with water sprays being especially effective against cats, as they tend to really dislike getting sprayed, even though it doesn't actually hurt them. They're smart though, so we'll work out routes to avoid triggering them or getting wet, but as long as that route doesn't allow them to get to the fish, it's a pretty effective solution. Next, I'm going to talk about probably the most dangerous predator of our fish and the hardest to protect against, and that's the otter. Otters are a member of the mustelid family, which also includes the badger, mink, weasels, stoats, martins and polecats, and is the only true semi-aquatic member of the weasel family. The average otter is 1 to 1.3 metres in length and weighs up to 9 kilograms. The diet consists of roughly 80% fish, but they also prey upon birds, mammals and frogs if fish are in short supply. Otter populations suffered catastrophic declines in the 1950s and 1960s in the UK, a trend that was also seen across continental Europe. The cause was the combined effects of water pollution, habitat destruction and persecution, including hunting. From the 1980s onwards, however, due to the Wildlife Countryside Act and their planned reintroduction, otter numbers have steadily increased. This has not been without issues, however, Reports now state that otters inhabit every county in the UK, but river systems still require extensive management to restore them to a healthy level that can sustain fish stocks and wildlife, something that is essential to ensure that otters reduce predation of still water lakes and garden ponds without decimating fish stocks in either. Otters are incredibly successful hunters, with speed and agility when swimming to catch fish underwater, a task that is made particularly easy within the confines of a pond. They are also very strong, being able to catch and kill even very large carp. In the town I live in, otters have been spotted in most of its lakes and have been film catching fish from garden ponds. The two nearest lakes to my house, each about a mile away, have both had resident otters from time to time. They are joined by a stream, the same stream that I've mentioned I rehome frogs to and that runs about 50 yards from my house. I would guess that the stream, which by and large connects most of the town's lakes, is the network by which otters travel between the lakes and therefore means they would pass quite close to my house. I'm very fortunate that they haven't detoured from it and explored my garden therefore. Which brings me to protection. Otters aren't that good at climbing, rarely over three to four foot, so garden fences would help prevent them accessing gardens and then ponds, except that they're excellent diggers. Once in the garden, my heron fence would provide little protection, as they could either dig under it or bite through it. Thinking of what else I could employ, I doubt that water sprays would discourage them. Electric wires might, 
but one, I'm not going to use them for many reasons, and two, I would imagine that otters would be able to find a way to crawl and dig around or under them. Nets covering the pond can be both crawled under and chewed through. Rigid frames may offer better protection, but I doubt they'd be impossible for otters to circumvent, and anyway, for my pond at least, fairly impossible to use. Pets, especially dogs, discourage them, although, similarly to foxes, they tend to hunt at night when household pets are curled up safely indoors. All in all, therefore, I think that otters are the biggest threat my fish could face, and I'm somewhat just crossing my fingers. I think I'm lucky in that the local streams and lakes provide an easily caught food source for what is quite a small otter population, so there's less pressure on them to explore other options regularly. That's no guarantee, obviously, and short of constructing a building around my pond, otters will remain probably the only predator that I will always struggle to provide any degree of effective protection against. And that brings me to the end of my short series on pond versus predators. I'd love for you to share any opinions you've got, any experiences you've got in protecting your fish, and generally any thoughts you've got about these two videos. So please leave them in the comment section below.